Hi, here we go. This is take two because I got a character name wrong and boy, that just irks me. But uh, hi, I'm Josh. I have seen a movie uh, and I'm here to talk about it. I saw a movie. I wouldn't call it a horror movie. It's a suspense thriller. But when I described it to my daughter and told her what I was seeing, she's like, why is it always scary movies? Why do you only see scary movies? And I thought back and it's like, yeah, this really has been a big year for like, uh, you know, I, I skip like if there's a PG-13 movie about a killer pool, I will skip that movie, but I've seen a lot of like uh, A24s and Neons. I'm not gonna call them elevated horror because that's not a thing. Uh, it's just you hope they'll be good. Independent horror, I think, is probably a better way to talk about it. And yeah, there's been a lot of that this year, and uh, there's been a lot of interesting stuff. This movie I'm gonna talk about, which is called Blink Twice, was not, is not, I would not call it a horror movie. There are horror elements, there's suspense, um, but this is a film directed by Zoe Kravitz, which is an interesting place to start. And um, this movie, again, is not a horror movie, but it has content in it such that there is a trigger warning at the beginning of the film. There's a trigger warning before the MGM logo even comes up. And I don't know if I've ever seen that in a theatrical movie. I've seen it on streaming and shows, but there is a warning about the content. Now, I again, this is not a full-on horror movie. There's a little bit of blood and some gory incidental things that happen but it's way more into the suspense it's more about the ideas there are there are movies in the theater right now that are way more graphically gory and nasty but this one it's the ideas and i'm gonna have to get close and talk around those ideas in my review i won't spoil anything i don't know what kind of uh footprint this movie has culturally or if anybody cares or is going to see it but um but from the look of my letterboxed uh homepage, I might be in the minority on this one, and I have a, I reluctantly have a complicated to negative take on the movie. So this is directed by Zoe Kravitz. It stars um, Naomi Aki, uh, who I, I looked to see what she was in. I've seen a few of the things, including The Rise of Skywalker. I totally forgot about anything that was in that movie. It was lovely to forget. Um, but she is the, the, the main character, and she is... Um, it's her and Alia Shawkat, I believe is how you say that name, from Arrested Development, who is great. I love her. She's fantastic, and she's really good in this movie. So is Naomi Aki. They're two uh, kind of hard, uh, you know, hard on their luck. Is that a phrase? I don't know. They're two, like, uh, service workers, but they, they serve, like, they work for a caterer, but they do, like, big, like, gala events in a, in a city. I don't know if it was New York or that kind of a vibe. And so they are just trying to make ends meet and they have hopes and dreams and they go, they work this gala and they meet this famous billionaire played by Channing Tatum and his name is Slater King, which is a very movie name. And uh, he's charming and he immediately makes a connection with um, Naomi Aki's character, who, uh, Frida, I believe is her name. And they get whisked away with his whole entourage to this, this island getaway. He's a billionaire, he's a party guy, he's had to apologize for his behavior, and you know, the, the, it, doesn't, it doesn't quite get into cancel culture stuff as much as I thought it would, until, you know, some there's some like villainy speeches at a certain point that, that touch on that. But essentially, he's got this unspecified past where he's apologized, but now he's, he's, he's doing charity work and he's working on himself. And, and essentially, he, it feels like he is meet, meeting cute with um, with Naomi Aki, and then she and Alia Shawkat get kind of whisked away to this island where all of his entourage and people are there. And there's a crazy um, cast. Simon Rex is there. Um, Gina Davis is like his concierge. Uh, Christian Slater is in his crew. Haley Joel Osment is there. It's it's very odd cast but fun so for the first half of this movie it's it's mercifully short and i mean mercifully short because it's so terrible i just like when movies especially movies like this are short um and for the first hour 40 minutes to an hour i was really um you know obviously they get there you know what's coming if you've seen the trailer or not they it seems too good to be true and they're in this island paradise and they're making friends with all these people and then things start to get weird and um then it just becomes a matter of figuring out what's going on. A train's going to go by. That's going to be fun. I'm outside my home today. Uh, and I really was with this movie for the first 45 minutes to an hour because it really didn't rush into the weirdness. It didn't rush towards dropping a whole bunch of clues. It really let, lets you spend time with the characters and this fun cast. And it felt like 
you know, it's mostly just people partying and it's kind of like this vision of like idyllic partying with a, with a billionaire on an island that just feels generationally like it's not anything to do with me and it's not what I would consider a fun time. But uh, like recreational drugs and, and just partying and, you know, immediately there are there are some red flags like the fact that all the girls in the crew like wake up to find their clothes for that day on their bed and it's all they're all dressed in the same white bathing suits and robes and things um which immediately feels a little culty but at first i admired how this movie was taking its time and not like rushing into schlock and and feeling like it was going somewhere it was once it started going somewhere that it lost me pretty quickly um, and again, I'm not going to spoil what's going on, but once you, once you get even close to the unraveling of what's going on and you find out what's really going on, it's like, oh, oh, wait, what? With every revelation, it's more like, it's one of those things where like you, I'm on board with the themes. The theme is about, you know, abuse of power and trying to control people and their perception and their memories and things like that. But what is actually going on? It's one of those movies where the thing that's actually going on is so absurd and so many people would have to be in on it. And it has like cartoon logic. It has like, well, if you keep doing this thing, well, then you're like this and you don't remember this. But then if you do this thing and you ingest this thing, suddenly, like, it's like a cartoon. It's like, and it didn't like, it didn't feel like it was like that until it was suddenly like that. So again, I'm on board, I, I'm, it's very beautifully shot and it's like well staged and the cast is fun and you can, the direction of the actors is good. But I, it's just the plotting that falls apart and feels insane by the end and not in a good way, not, not in the way you want a movie to be bonkers by the end. Um, but also there's a bit of an undermining of dread and suspense and horror in this. The elements of it that are supposed to be scary, there's moments that are supposed to be jump scares and just the way they are staged and edited, it undermines, there's nothing actually scary that ever happens. There's nothing ever surprising. It almost as if like the movie is constantly like letting you off the hook from tension. And it's just supposed to be the ideas that are scary, but they're so cartoonishly over the top. Uh, and then there's a little bit of like a, of a tag on the end that kind of is a reversal where you're like, aha, it's supposed to be very satisfying. But it's even more ridiculous than the ridiculous stuff that was going on. And it's left like, well, boy, why, you wouldn't want to do that. You wouldn't want to stay in that situation. Anyway, so um, an interesting movie, a fun cast. And I certainly would be willing to see another movie directed by Zoe Kravitz. It's not a disaster, but it didn't add up to much for me. So unfortunately, I did not love Blink Twice. But, uh, you know, let's keep trying. Give me more movies. What else you got? Uh, thank you so much for watching. You can see these reviews earlier and you can see uh, uh, other stuff on Patreon if you support me there or you can just subscribe here and like and share these videos. I'd love to hear what you think. What movies do you see? Did you see Blink Twice? Did you enjoy it? Um, what movies are you looking forward to? All that kind of fun stuff. I will talk to you again very soon. Josh out.